Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Grading Your Footage. And today we are gonna look at this really, really cool shot from Italy, from Gabriel, I think he's called. I'll put his Instagram up here and it's down in the description as well. It's such a cool shot. It's captured from the Mini 3 Pro in the Cinelike. And I've been super excited to grade this one. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to go and see this with my own eyes in Italy someday. But until then, I'm super happy that he provided me this clip so that we can get some grading in today. So let's jump into DaVinci and get started. All right, guys, we're inside DaVinci and this is the clip that we're working with today. As you can see, it's shot in the Cinelike and it's flat, but it still has a little bit more color than you usually see with normal d log footage. So I'm super, super excited. We have some rotation stuff going on. So I think I'm just gonna jump straight into grading and I'm gonna show you the faults that I have today. I have cheated a little bit. So I did actually just try it out beforehand so that I could see what we were able to do. So today we have a plan. So we're gonna jump in with the color space transform first. And I just told you that it is shot in decent like. Unfortunately, DaVinci doesn't have a mapping for that. So I'm actually gonna use the D-Log one. And I know some people will say that is wrong. I know. It probably is, but I do get quite a good result from doing it. So now you get to see what to do and you can do it yourself as well if you want to. So we are going to transform it from the lock to DaVinci White Gamut. We did that in the first one here. And now I'm converting it from the uh, DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate to Gamma 2.4 and Rec 709. So as you can see, this actually gives us a pretty good starting point and just from seeing this image, I would be almost perfectly happy with just using it like this. I think it's just managed to map it perfectly into what it's supposed to look like. So I'm actually happy with the conversion here. All right, with this out of the way, let's just name this CST Rec and CST DaVinci White Gamut. If you don't know why I'm converting it to DaVinci White Gamut, it's because when I work with all different sorts of clips, whether it's my camera, my own Canon camera or drones or whatever, when I put it into DaVinci White Gamut, I know that the colors will work the same way no matter what I do. And now we're just creating one clip, but if I were to create more clips, that makes sense to do. All right, so I just named these. This is gonna be our contrast, we're starting with that. Then the exposure, I don't know if we need to do that much. Temperature, I don't think we're gonna do anything with that today. And then the contrast separation. So I might just delete some of these notes again in a second, but. Let's just get started. So first up, the contrast. We can see it's already lying towards the darker side. You can see that both in the waveform down here and in the curve. So let's just see what we can do without harming it too much. Just want to put in a little bit more contrast, but without crushing anything too much down here. I just gave it a little bit more of a darker mood, but I just I don't want to go too far with this. I think this is pretty good. We just want to give it some more contrast. I'm gonna crank up the offset quite a bit, but I think that's gonna it's gonna make it a little bit too bright. And also when it rotates, we get to much more bright side here. So if you see without the exposure changes here, it's definitely way too bright when we put it on. So I'm just gonna drag down the gain a little bit again and maybe a little bit of the lift, just the gamma a little bit. And now we have it as a little bit more of a flat starting point, And I like that. Let's go back to this point. I think that's a great point to grade from. Temperature wise, we're not going to do anything. So I'm just going to delete that again. Let's do our uh, usual tone separation here. I'm going to drag it down a little bit lower than I usually do. And I'm not going to go too hard on it. I'm holding down option to keep the points in place. And I've split the RGB up here by unlinking this button here. So now I'm just gonna pull in a little bit more of a teal look and see the teal in all the shadows here. And then I'm gonna use the red one to just put in a little bit more warmth in the image here, like so. That's definitely too strong. Remember that these are set to 100, but these are 50 normally. Oh, 50 is zero, sorry. So I'm gonna set this one to 60 and these ones to 80 as the red channel is stronger than the other ones. And that just gave us a little bit of this blue chillish in the shadows and a little bit more warmth in some of the highlights up here. So that's basically what we've done. It's quite subtle, but I like to do it. I think it creates a little bit more dynamic and it's a better starting point to create from. So let's just use these three. I'm gonna name them real quick. 
So we have the primaries, the hue curve, and the saturation. That's what we're going to do today. Jumping into the primaries first, I'm just going to add a little bit of a green look to this one and move one red. So I usually I go teal, so I'll add one more blue than green. We're going to go for a little bit more of a green look today. I think that suits it pretty well. I'm actually going to crank the gamma up to two red, so one more than we removed, and then remove some of this green blue again. I think this just gives us a lot of great separation as this is a lot warmer now and we have the green tones. It's not as blue. We have it a little bit more green and faded and I think that creates a really nice separation in the colors for this clip particularly. I think we want to maybe pull in a little bit of warm yellow into the gain here and then maybe just remove one blue. Yeah, I think that looks good just to give it an even more warm look and separate the colors a little bit. Into the hue curve, we can see that all the colors pretty much lies within the teal bluish tone here. So we're not going to do that much. We're just going to adjust the few red tones that we have down here, orange tones. Just going to zoom in a little bit here and then see what we can do, what looks nicer. So I think we want to, we want to keep it quite close to the line, but just go a little bit above to give it a little more of a red magenta ish look or orange look, I think it is. And then if we play around with this, maybe just pull it slightly towards the greens, but not that much. Go into the sad one and not the sad one, but the saturation one and just pull down the saturation a tiny bit for what we just did in here, like so. And then we're gonna look at the Bigger part here and see if we just drag down the saturation. That looks a little bit better. Then for the luminance, we are gonna be a little bit careful. So just give it a little bit more luminance in the highlights here, which is the red parts, and just give it a little less luminance in the rest of the image. It's very subtle. And if we look at what we did with these two, we've just warmed it up quite a bit. So the primaries did a big job here warming it up and separating everything else. We have the warm highlights coming from in here and then the darker, more blue greenish shadows. Then for the saturation, I just want to go into sat versus sat and just drag down from in here. Just want to make it because it kind of gets me these, um, I want to say ghost vibes. I just want to drag down the saturation overall a little bit just to get back that look and to make sure that nothing is too oversaturated. I'm not going to go here with all where all the, the most saturated parts lie. I'm just going to drag down in, around the middle and we can see it stretches out all the way. We can actually see, even though it's a bit difficult to see, there's a peak up here as well. If it had been further into the side here, I would have made a point and made a desaturation in here instead. But since that's not the case, we're just going to drag it down like this. It's very subtle. When I turn it on and off, we basically cannot see anything happening. I think we should zoom in. You can see a little bit of desaturation going on here. So it's not that much, but it gives a little bit of an effect. All right, on to the last part here. I'm gonna make a few parallel notes. So making these is adding a note, parallel note. I use option A, that's the shortcut I've made. Let me just rename these real quick. So this is gonna be our focus. We're gonna put some focus and contrast into the middle part here. Highlights, gonna control the highlights and adjust those a bit. And the shadows, gonna adjust the shadows on the left side here. Now, if we look at the image, we want to put in some more contrast here to just kind of put in the focus. Then we see the light is coming from over here somewhere right now, but it's actually coming. You can see it, it lights up the entire side of the city here. So it's definitely coming from up here somewhere. But then as we rotate the clip in a minute, it'll rotate with it. So we need to make sure that we track our frame for that, our power window. And at the same time, we can see the shadows over here. But if we just make shadows over all here, it will look really weird because we have more shadows here than, than up here. So we're going to try and balance that with the qualifier. So for the first part, the focus, I'm just going to make a circular window here, pull it in, rotate it a little bit here, and then just feather it out. This is pretty good. Just going to go in and link our custom curve here again. Just going to drag down a little bit. I'm not going to do it too much. I think that was actually a little bit too much. Just like so. You can see we just made a little bit more contrast. Pull in the focus a little bit more to this part. 
Then I'm going to make an outside node, which basically just selects everything but the city. I'm just going to pull down the gamma a little bit just to kind of remove a little bit of focus. And now we're going to redo some of that with the highlight and shadows, but just to kind of fix everything. And we might actually just take the focus one and just pull up the gamma a little bit as well. The highlights are going to make a circular power window as well. I'm going to drag it up and out a little bit here. And I'm going to feather it to 100. And click Shift H to see what we are covering. And for the first, actually, we're going to go to the first frame first. And you can see that it's rotated sideways now. So it fits perfectly with the power window being up here. And then Shift H to see what we're doing. Something around here, I think, is pretty good. Going to pull up the gamma a little bit and pull up the gain a little bit as well. And then we want to make it more yellow. So let's start with the gamma and just pull one more red than the green. And now it turned a little bit too green. So I'm just going to pull down on the gain a little bit here just to see what we can do. And I think that looks pretty good. It gives us this warm light coming from the side. I'm going to make another node here. Let me just show you how to do that serial node. I'm going to connect the two alpha keys to make sure that we have the same selection as this power window selects. Kind of like the outside node, but instead of selecting everything outside it, we are selecting the same part and it blends together into the parallel layer mix up here. I'm just going to go in and select dehaze and pull that onto our node here. And it looks really weird now because it's dehazing, it's trying to remove haze. But if we go and it's 0.8, but if we go to negative 0.1, I'll just soften up everything. It's very subtle, but you can see what it does. And if I go in full screen, this is turning it off and this is turning it on. So it just gives it a little bit more of a soft glow. And it also removes a little bit of that yellow tint. I like to put that in to make it a little bit more soft and subtle. Now, because everything is rotating, now we are at frame one. I'm gonna go in and say tracking here. I'm not gonna use any of the auto tracking because that's gonna go horribly wrong. It doesn't know what to track. So I'm just going to go into frame instead. I'm going to put in a keyframe here. It makes a little mark up here. And then I'm going to go to the last frame that we have up here. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to drag it in here. I'm going to click Shift H to see what we're doing so that we're making sure that we're selecting the path that we want to select up here. Something like this. Zoom in and see, yeah, we still get, get the effect that we want. And what this does now is that when we look up here, I'll be going back to the first frame. You can see that now it rotates with it. So we're actually getting the light to switch with the scene and making sure that our light coming in from the side doesn't stay up here because now that we're rotating around, now the light would look like it was coming from up here, which is not the case. It is still coming from the bottom and that's what we're controlling with this. So that's just a neat trick for you. And let's go back to the first frame again. Go to our shadows and we are gonna make a Another power window. Today we're just using the circular ones. And just soften up to 100 again. Shift H and see what we're doing. And just pulling it a little bit more. We just want to hit the back side of the city, which we are now. But I don't want to hit all of the lighter parts up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the qualifier. Shift H to see what I'm doing. I'm going to drag down the luminance up here until I can see that I'm losing all this. This will not look good, but what we can do is we can soften up the highlights here and that will just make it quite a bit better. So something like this, I think will be pretty good. Then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to drag up to soften the shadows a little bit. And I'm going to drag it down. Something like this just makes it a soft shadow. Okay, you actually pulled it up a little bit too much. Something like this. And it looks like our qualifier is not doing the exact job that we want. So maybe we need to drag it down a little bit more. Something like this, because I don't want it to be hitting this part up here too much. And maybe we can actually counter that as a little, little bit as well by just dragging this up. Something like this, I think is pretty good. And we're going to do the same thing for the rotation for this one. So keyframe it in, make sure you click frame, hit the keyframe, go to the last part here. And then we're going to rotate it and drag it up here and then just make sure that we have the parts here that we want. And now you see that the scene is a lot brighter. 
So I mean, it's it's not affecting as much, but that's on purpose because it's basically the parts behind the city that we want affected. And now that they aren't as much and everything is a lot brighter, we don't want it to affect too much. It'll just start looking weird. So that is essentially what I want to do for this. So if we just go back to around the middle here, you can see if you want to see that it rotates, it does. Um, if we take all of our mask here, this is basically what we have done. Just creating the light, making it a lot brighter up here and just kind of putting more focus on the light and the softness here. What I see now is that it looks like it's a little bit too much on the highlight side. So I'm just going to drag this down a little bit and then we can drag it up with the curves because we forgot to do that before. And I think that makes it a lot nicer. So that is essentially what we're doing today. We came from this, that was the image that we started with. Let's find a nice frame here. And this is what we ended up with. This is from the Mini 3 Pro, and I think this looks absolutely incredible. I really love to work with the footage from the drone here. I think it looked, I think it ended up really nice. So that's what I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this clip as said in the beginning. I need to go to Italy. This looks absolutely incredible. Thank you so much to Gabriel for sending in this clip. It's so cool. So thank you so much for that. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next time, take care.